27 years ago, I was born into this world without my permission. <laughs> And to my family, my relatives, I was a special baby, a different baby. Why? Because I was born with these two funny little things on my head, which are two crowns. In Mandarin, we call it 两个钻 People have one, and I have buy one free one. <laughs> and my relatives, when they see me, they say I look like a superhero when I was young. Which superhero? Ultraman. But some relatives disagree with this statement. They say you, I don't think you look like an Ultraman. You look like a rooster. <laughs> and in some cultures. There's a myth that if you have these two crowns, like Ultraman or a rooster, you are a maker, not coffee maker, a troublemaker, <laughs> difficult child, naughty kid, rebellious, etc. And imagine what will happen if I'm at home or school. Who makes the kid cry? Gary. Broken vase? Gary. Poor Wi-Fi? Gary, it can be very sad in your childhood if you are judged entirely based on your hairstyle, not based on your behavior. And sooner or later, I grew up a little bit more, and I went through the same process like everyone else. I need to learn how to read and write, and I realized that we have only one mouth to read, but there are actually two hands to write with, and I don't know why and how I choose the left one. That's why I'm not always right. And my teacher say that if you are a left-hander, not only your hair looks like chicken, you know, your handwriting also looks like chicken, chicken claws. Chakar ayam means ugly handwriting, and that's how I met the second myth in my life. But there are some teachers; they are quite kind, you know. Give me, they give me some hopeful myth. Your handwriting actually looks like doctors. Handwriting, and thanks to my teacher, I almost ended up becoming a doctor. Almost, but close to being a doctor, I became a clinical psychologist. Ah, <laughs> thanks, thanks to my handwriting as well. And when I became a clinical psychologist, everything in my life has changed, including when I meet new people. You know. And I meet new people. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm Gary. Hey, I'm Jason. What do you do? I study psychology. And 99.999 percent, they will ask this question. Can you read my mind? Ah? <laughs> and after knowing my psychology background, all my relatives brought their children. You know, son, daughter, all come to my house and ask this question. Hey, Gary, can you see my daughter? Ah, always likes to play mobile games with her thumb out. You know, can you tell me? Ah, what is inside her mind? And with an awkward manner, I say, "Sorry, Auntie, that's not how psychology works. You know, psychology is actually about." Immediately, she stopped me and said, "Huh? You don't want to help, is it? Huh? You can't read mine? Never mind." <laughs> and imagine what will happen if you are in a romantic relationship, right? I had a girlfriend. Sorry, I still have a girlfriend. <laughs> and and you know, in a month, in a month, there are periods of time when girls are sometimes moody. And being a caring boyfriend, I always ask my girlfriend, "Hey, you look a bit unhappy, moody, man. Oh, what makes you unhappy?" Wow, with tears in eyes, fisting her anger, she look at me and say, "Huh? Ask, ask, ask. What you need to ask? Huh? Can you read mine?" And looking at her expression, without the need to read her mind, ah, I know I'll be doomed in the next minute. <laughs> Psychologists can read mind. It's a popular and widespread myth, even in the field of. Mental health psychology. We even joke about it among ourselves. But that's what I want to share with you. This is what myths are. They are popular, they are widespread, and they are not always true. So my friends always ask. So Gary, you know we laugh at myths, but are they really harmful? But let's talk about it in the context of mental health. Look at this one. People with depression can recover by cheering themselves up. Depression is a clinical condition, just like the flu. People with depression, they feel depressed most of the time. Lack of motivation, disturbed sleep, affected concentration, thoughts of dying, etc. Because it's a clinical condition, they need medication and psychotherapy. So if we ask someone with depression by saying that you know you just have to focus, give your best, just think positive, you'll be fine, it's just like you are asking someone who's having a diarrhea. You know, you just hold it and breathe in and everything, you will be fine. And that's how ridiculous it is if you had a diarrhea before. 
The second one, talking about suicide is a bad idea. It might plant the idea in someone's head. Don't talk about it. But let's take durian as an example. If you keep talking durian, 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 durian in front of someone who doesn't like durian like me, I won't become a durian lover. In addition to that, I will hate you more than durian. If we express our concerns to someone who has struggled with their suicidal thoughts, it actually opens a door of opportunity that it's okay to talk about it, it's okay to share a feeling, and we are here to help. The third one, mental illness is a sign of weakness. If you have depression, anxiety, disorder, if you have mental illness, you are weak, you have a weak personality. But hold on, there's an illness in mental illness. It's an illness that can happen to anyone, just like diabetes and high cholesterol. It's a sign that we are all human beings, there are times that we struggle, and there are times that we care about ourselves. So what will happen to our society if all of us believe this myth? People with mental health condition, they will be blamed by their families and friends, prejudice and discrimination. They refuse to get treatment, and at the end of the day, they give up. Well, one question to ask, why does this phenomenon exist? It's all about ignorance. It's about we don't know. We don't know about ourselves, and in short, we are too far from understanding psychology. And I, ever since I studied psychology, I received all sorts of questions from different people of different populations. They kept asking me, hey, Gary, whether to rotan or to rotan, not to rotan or clap, whatever to my children, can I do this like this? And some guy friends say, hey, can, how to tackle this girlfriend? Huh? And my mom is going to ask me, can you persuade the seller to give more discounts during the mega sales? <laughs> and all sort of questions, but one thing in common, it's all about human beings. And I find that people are curious about themselves. They're curious about people around them. But why do they ask a clinical psychologist about themselves? Imagine that when you go into a supermarket, you will see a variety of products with product description and manual, right? Ingredient of biscuit, ice cream, instruction of how to cook porridge with rice and water, how to install a projector, light, etc. We are so good at operating tools around us, but we are stuck with ourselves. And I asked my mom, Mom, where's the manual of my brain when I was born? And she asked me, you study psychology. And that's how it is. And when I study psychology, I realized that this manual is actually in the hands of psychology students and psychologists. Look, we study human behavior every day, we conduct psychological experiments, we write research, TC paper, etc. But all this knowledge is kept in our mind forever. It seems like we are all living in the same world, but we are doing our own things in our own world, so that's why the uncle auntie in front of me still asks the same question. Gary, can you read my mind? And that's how it is. But one thing to say is that there's a large gap between general public and psychology. And we can do something about it by stepping out from the academic spaces and share psychology with them so that they can learn like us. Look, the general public doesn't have to know about the psychological jargon, statistical number, theories, etc. What they need is a meaningful answer in their life. How can I better understand myself? How can I become a better partner in a relationship? How can I become a better parent? So what they need is psychology knowledge that is made easier, easy to digest, and easy to bite. That's why we call it the bite-sized content. Six years ago, combining my love in videography and psychology, I started an online platform called My Psychology with my housemate, and they are all here today. Six years ago, we published the first video. It's about psychology of waiting. We criticize how irregular bus schedule can make us mentally stressed, we explain how the TV screen after the cinema can make our waiting time occupy. In the following month, we make more and more and more videos. And one problem arises. Most of our audience are psychology students from the same course, not the general public, which means that we are still doing our own thing in our own world. Why? Who cares? It's irrelevant to them. They don't need to know about it. And it takes us so long to understand that we have to really come to the ground and look from their perspective, what do they really care the most? So it's no longer a psychology lecturer giving you a lecture about psychology, but it's more like a neighborhood Spider-Man chit-chatting with you how you can address your everyday life concerns with psychology tips. So when people ask, hey Gary, what can I do? 
if my family member has depression. So we have self-disclosure. We share our personal stories of having family members who has depression. We share about warning signs that they can also take note and direct them to the right help. And we share simple and easy to apply active listening techniques so that they can support their family members without the need to become a counsellor and clinical psychologist. And parents ask me, hey, how come I keep rotan, rotan, and slap whatever I do? Huh? My children are still disobedient. And we discuss about different types of parenting styles and their consequences. If you happen to become a strict parent, you establish a lot of rules without taking your children's feeling into consideration, your children might have anger issues. They might be more likely to rebel when they grow up. And, par and parents, your behavior are observed by children. They learn through observation because monkey see, monkey do. So parents, parents need to learn as well. And the third one, all guys friends always ask me, hey, can you help me uh, to tackle the world toughest question given by my girlfriend? Which one? The real question. What if your mom and I fall into the river at the same time, who will you say first? But using the lens of psychology, we help them to learn how to approach this question from the context level. Perhaps it's not about the question. It's about her feeling and her concern about the status in the relationship. So we share about tips of how to maintain a healthy romantic relationship and how to address conflict in a healthier level. And we do have a lot of students asking questions that, you know, I am very hardworking, right? I study a lot, a lot, but somehow my results are not well, all this well. And using psychology knowledge, we share with them how and why we forget. We share with them how you can well plan your revision using the perfect timing and how to mix and match your subjects during your revision time. And we have used various approaches, such as Facebook album, such as writing articles, posts, Facebook live video, etc., with one hope to make psychology easy to learn, easy to understand, so that the public can learn like us and they can share with their uncle, auntie, neighbors, parents, colleagues, etc., and they can apply psychology knowledge just like psychologists. And it's all about going beyond academic spaces. It's all about making psychology every day, making psychology for everyone. And to me, the idea of psychology for everyone is about giving the power of understanding back to the community, empowering each of us a chance to know about ourselves once more. I really hope that there will be a day when I meet a new friend, he won't ask the mind-reading question again. Instead, he will say, hey, Gary, I'm learning psychology too. Let's talk more about it. And that will be the most anticipated day in my life. Thank you for your kind attention. I'm Gary with you, my psychology.